Good morning. We're going to be broadcasting on TikTok Live too while we do this. So if I look down instead of there, you'll understand why I'm trying to reach two audiences. Are we, um, are we live on YouTube or Facebook? YouTube? Okay, great. All right, just give me two seconds here and we will get started. <clears throat> Actually, the title of the sermon is The Inhabited Planets of the Universe. And uh, I'm going to take a, make an attempt at uh, trying to make some sense of that. We'll see what we can do here. What's that? Oh, yeah. Um, as of yesterday, we just uh, went over the mark of 250,000 followers on TikTok, which is kind of a milestone. And it's been nine months of, of diligent effort, you know, in order to get to that, you know, especially when you're not young and pretty and everything. I'm far from that. So it becomes more of a challenge when it comes to... Uh, to progress on a, on a platform that is typically a, a younger person's platform. So, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, so welcome everybody, everyone on TikTok and also YouTube and the rest of us here. And I appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about the universe. We're going to talk about are there inhabited planets and can we get that information from what source and what do they look like and what are they, you know, and how do we know? You know, it's funny, the universe is huge. And let me begin by saying this. Can we see, you go ahead and see slide number one here? And slide number one basically says, picture of the universe, you are here. Why? Um, I'm sorry, did I say universe? Our galaxy. <clears throat> Our Milky Way galaxy is absolutely huge. The question is, are there other life forms on other planets? Are there other planets? First off, we're going to look at it mathematically, okay? Just mathematically. And whether you're an evolutionist, whether you're an atheist, whether you're an agnostic, whether you believe in uh, creation, uh, truthfully, everyone, when looking at the possibilities, the mathematical possibilities of having other planets with other types of life forms, whatever they may look like, seems very plausible. Let me share with you a few of those uh, a few of those um, uh, statistics. Our Milky Way is a galaxy, okay? It is 100,000 light years long. And I'm not even going to begin to tell you how many miles that is. It's astronomically large. <clears throat> it contains 400 billion suns in just this one galaxy. 400 billion suns, and the universe is estimated to have 125 billion galaxies. When you add that all up, that's about 50 trillion stars. <clears throat> that's a lot. What does that look like? What is a billion? If a if a million was one inch, then a billion would be 83 feet four inches. And don't even begin to, to try to calculate trillion because that would be just like nuts. So <clears throat> the probability of life, even from an evolutionary standpoint, that it could, you know, let's just say that it happened naturalistically, which it did, didn't, but I'm just saying though, even from that worldview, the probability of life on other planets is quite high, actually. But what does it look like? Um, go ahead and give me image number two. There's basically two worldviews 
when you're asking this question, when you filter through them through, you come up with a little bit different, uh, shall I say, conclusion, okay? Uh, let's, let's explore those. Um, evolution states that any being apart from us, so what I'm saying is, is that if there's something out there, it also evolved naturalistically. And what I mean by naturalistically, it means that it's on its own, by itself, through chance, through environmental pressure, through, na uh, through positive mutation and natural selection, and that it evolved, and there you have it. That is, that's how the mechanism would work on another planet. From a creationist standpoint, any being that's on this planet or any other planet is going to be created by design. So you have two diametrically opposed worldviews up there encapsulated in two books, Darwin's Origin of Species and also the, the Bible. Are there these other planets, Martians that look like this, running them around? I mean, because if you were to ask what life looks like on other planets, as far as another being, you would probably come, I mean, the average person on the street, they would come up with something like this. And how they transport back and forth from their planet would look something like this, all right? And so, <laughs> This is how we view this here in the, in the United States and also the world if we had to take a stab at what other beings from other planets. You know, scientists don't do this, though. This is what's interesting. Scientists don't, you know, basically buy into this. Um, they may personally but professionally know, and they don't buy into this professionally, but personally they might. And what Kristen and I have, and you know, I, I kind of told her this in the beginning, and I think she... She's starting to see, and maybe you are too, and uh, although this talk is not about aliens, more so than trying to explore this idea of life on other planets and what it all means, and that is, is that um, there are a lot of high-profile people over the last decade that are starting to come out and talk about this. No longer it is the UFOologist, the crackpot, the person that supposedly was abducted, or the individual that just has a passion for this, who comes across as kind of a nutcase, um, you know, saying, pointing, going, here, here, see, see, it's all true, you know? You're starting to get, and how many of you seen generals, Air Force, Russian officials, scientists, astronauts, and when you start to hear them collectively, and let's say in one uh, hour and a half presentation, it starts to get you to wonder, what is going on? And, I, and, I, and, and the reason why I bring this up on, uh, here at, at this church is because on TikTok, they've been asking about this. A gentleman by the name of Colin, uh, yesterday I believe it was, or Thursday, asked the question, is there life on, on other planets and can it be supported by the Bible? And I was all ready to give him three or four scriptures and I thought, you know what, why don't we just go ahead and write, do a sermon? So, Colin, if you're on here, um, I'm glad you're here, <laughs> okay? So, this is the image that is projected by most people when it comes to that, but not necessarily by scientists, but what about Christians? You know, I'll tell you something, except for one woman who I will quote at the end of this, there is really no one that I've been able to see that has actually asked that question and tried to tackle it. Are there other people on other planets? It just seems like most denominations, and I'm not faulting them for it, are silent on this issue. And maybe rightly so. And maybe I should be silent on the issue as well. But I'm just gonna take a crack at it. I'll let you know when I'm speculating. I'll let you know when I'm, what I'm reading into it, and then you can decide for yourself. All right, so the chances of life, staggering. Listen to this statistic. We have an, um, scientists with the increased technology of telescopes, um, 
you know, the Hubble telescope and other telescopes that are being designed here on Earth and up in space are able to pierce into um, and with their spectrometers, and again, I'm not an astrophysicist, but with their ability to measure certain gases and, 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 and other measurements that they do, they're able to see and discover uh, little blips of something going around a sun, and they're saying there's a planet right there, it's darkening the surface, and I guess that's how they tell. They're also able to point whatever and start to analyze what the chemical makeup of these planets are. They say in our own Milky Way, our own galaxy, that there is somewhere around six billion Earth-like planets that they are estimating in our galaxy alone. You know what's really interesting? We go about our day, we get in our car, we put on WSYR or whatever, you know. We go to work, we come home, we are so myopic as to what is going on out there. I just saw a diagram, I, I'm sorry that I couldn't show you the animation, where the sun is moving and the solar system is chasing it. I'm like going, I thought the sun was just kind of like stationary and we're going around it, evolving, revolving, and the moon's revolving and ev you know, evolving around and that was it. But they're showing the sun moving like it's revolving around something and, and the planets are around it chasing it. And I'm like going, you know, our Earth revolves, uh, what is it, a thousand miles an hour our Earth is turning right now. And I'm not even sure what the speed is as far as going around the sun, but it's 92 to 4, 94 million miles in one year. And then, we're sit and then we're in the car and somebody gets in our way and we're like, you jerk. I know what I'm just saying is, is that we're so coistered in our, in our view of things. It's just amazing, you know? It's, it's, it's <laughs> I don't know how we're supposed to think about things, but I'm just saying though, I just think it's just really ironic how much of a speck of, 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 of dust we are in comparison to just our own galaxy, let alone the universe. And here we are. Here we are. It's amazing. <clears throat> if that ratio of six billion planets is correct, and if it holds true throughout the rest of the universe, that means that there are 750 billion Earth-like planets throughout the universe. <clears throat> That's a lot of planets. And what if 1% of them had uh, you know, some kind of life on it? And I'll get to that in just a second. I don't know what that number would be, but that's amazing. Now, let's look at the life forms that evolutionists would say that, or could, or have tried to imagine, that might be on other planets. Go ahead and give me number three. And these are just artist renditions of life on other planets based on science, based on their interpretation. You know, different uh, types of atmospheres and gravity, uh, sunlight and, and whatnot. And uh, go ahead and, and, and show us the number four. Creatures that they try to imagine, you know, uh, this is looks like a, uh, I'm not sure what that is, is that a, a, a cactus, rock-like um, spider or something? I mean, you know, and I'm not laughing at them, but I'm just saying though, you know, they, they, they have, they, you know, <clears throat> they got to figure something out. Go ahead and show us our next slide. Again, you know, what do, what do other life forms on other planets look like? Look, they are so hard pressed to find life on Mars. Supposedly, 20 years ago or so, we found a meteorite, what looked, and they, and they figured out that the meteorite was actually a piece of Mars that had landed, and this was not the first time that pieces of Mars, I guess, had landed on planet Earth, but what was amazing about it is that when they looked at it under a microscope, they believed they saw a fossilized microbe um, on this Mars, would allegedly be a Mars meteorite. 
That gave them hope. When they sent Viking up there in 1976, all eyes were on it because it tested for life. And guess what they found on Mars in 1976? Zilch. When I get on the forums or talk in terms of life on another planet, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's got to start off real small. The evolutionary theory is that we, all of us here, started off three billion years ago as a proto-RNA, rained on rocks as the Earth was cooling, and then through the mechanisms that they have you know, identified that creates higher life forms, here we are three billion years later, okay? Here's the problem. The problem is, is that even if that was true, at any given point, it could be just completely wiped out by radiation, lack of water. Uh, has anybody ever seen a positive mutation? Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's mostly negative, and even if it was neutral. And so the mathematical possibility, and, and, and people who are agnostic, evolutionists, whatever, who are honest at heart have said that mathematically it's just impossible for this thing to even take place. But on another planet, here's my, here's my thought. It has to be all like a ready-made terrarium, or it doesn't happen at all. And some would balk, balk against that, and they have and everything, but that's, that's my thought. Um, re, uh, pick, picture number six, please. <clears throat> so, you know, from a naturalistic point of view, these guys right here, which again, scientists may or may not acknowledge, the idea or theory behind these fellas is that the reason why they're driving their little spacecrafts here is because they started the evolutionary process way before us, which gives them an intellectual, technological advantage, and they're taking advantage of that coming here. But it's really weird because all they do is they come here, and then we, um, and then they just tease us. You know, they don't land at the Capitol and come out just like in that one movie. Um, which one is it? The one where uh, they actually landed in Washington and came out and said, we're here, uh, we're here, we're peaceful, and here we are. You know, it doesn't happen. It's always lights darting around and teasing us, and, and nothing ever, it's always very just out of our grasp. So, from a creationist perspective, could you uh, give me slide number seven? The universe, when it was created originally, before we were created, had three different, well, I should say, two different types of beings at that point. You had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's one, if you want to call it a being. Uh, it's one order, if you want to even call it that. I dare say not, but. But then the angels were all spoke, spoken into existence all at once. Um, they had four wings, they had six wings. And that's what populated heaven at one point. That's what the universe looked like for a long time before anything else was done. While that was going on, there were other planets, and I'll try to show you here from Scripture, being created one by one by one by one. And beings, now I believe, again, this is speculation, that they were in the image of God, like we are, and they were um, placed on these planets, and all is well with them, by the way, just want to let you know, all is well. There was dissatisfaction in heaven, and if you notice, the being on the left here with the six wings, and the being on the right there with the six wings, are the two covering cherub, maybe some of you saw the movie uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, well, that ark has two covering cherubs, and that ark was actually uh, a human-created uh, uh, facsimile of this in heaven. Now, the being in the middle is the Father. The being on the left is Lucifer. His name was Daystar, or Morning Star at the time. It was a beautiful name. And then we had an unnamed angel on, to the, uh, on the right. 
Front and center is, is, is Jesus, and this was before he actually came to earth. There was a problem in heaven. The being on the left named Lucifer decided that, you know what, I would like Jesus' job. I'd like to be able to create. I'd like to be able to speak with my voice things into existence. I really think I should deserve that. Look at me, I'm pretty beautiful. Uh, he was given the most privileges as far as his look, his position. He was the man but not like how we say it today. It was a very humble position because that's how it is in, in, in heaven. The order of things is a servant of servants. That's how it's done. Love and just a complete adornment of the Father and the Son because of the fact that they're the ones who deserve it. And so there was dissatisfaction and that dissatisfaction spilled over to the other angels Nobody knows how many there are, but one-third of those angels were convinced. Convinced that perhaps this one right here on the left had something to say. And that one that on the left said something to say is like, we don't need law. And we don't need, we need our independence. And so there was what they call war in heaven. War in heaven sounds like the biggest paradox, dichotomy east from west, black from white, that they could ever conceive war in heaven. One third of those angels defected. They left. There was a void in heaven. Prior to that, all these worlds were created. And I'm going to share those scriptures in just two minutes here. And that one third left. So now we've got, potentially, other created beings that are not angels. Angels, but now we've got one-third that are evil, two-thirds that are still good, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the universe, however big that is. The earth was created. My understanding was created last. And we were given the ability to procreate. Some have suggested that that procreation and our, our distinct order of beings here on planet Earth, had it gone well, we would have been those who were then, after we passed that one test, been elevated from, from human, uh, righteous human like Adam and Eve before they fell, to even a higher position to repopulate heaven of that one third that, were, uh, that left. And so that was kind of the idea. All right, that's a, maybe a little speculative on my part, but I'm just going to throw that out there. Let's take a look at the scriptures. The book of Job, one of the oldest books ever written in the Bible. It's even older, from some scholars' point of view, than Genesis. Genesis, um, the first five books of, of, of the Bible written by Moses, is approximately 1400, 1450 B.C. is when Moses wrote it. But the book of Job... Was some have speculate, or some scholars, if you want to call it speculation, figure somewhere in the neighborhood of 1700 to 1800 BC, or 350 years to 450 years before Genesis was, was written. In, Gen in, in Job chapter 1, verse 6, notice what it says. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? And Satan said to the Lord, from going forth to and fro on the earth, from walking back and forth on it. There was another meeting sometime after that. We don't know how long. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, and I'm going to key on the word sons of God. I want you to hold that, that uh, expression for a second. Came to present themselves before the Lord. And, and it adds a couple of words here in this next one. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now, sons of God with a small s can be two things. It can be an, un it can be, excuse me, it can be, yeah, it can be an angel. Angel has all have been called sons of God. So this could be that angels came and were congregating with God. Sons of God, if you take a look at Luke chapter 3, verse 38, is also an unfallen human. It says here, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, who is the son of God. 
small s, unfallen Adam. Unfallen Adam. When Jesus came to earth, he said, I'm the son of God, unfallen being, and the son of man poured into a body that sins, although Jesus never did. The daughters of men in, in, in chapter 6 of Genesis talks about the daughters of men. The sons of God came to the daughters of men and they had children and everything just went from, from bad to worst. I believe that these people who came at least twice here to present themselves were the representatives of the unfallen worlds. And Lucifer usurped Adam's rightful place as the representative of earth, and that's the reason why Lucifer, or Satan at this point, even showed up. He had to show up. He was a, he's the representative of this earth, unfortunately. Now, God is the owner of everything that is true, but there's a game, a chess match being played here, and when this is over with, there can't be any, well, it wasn't fair. Lucifer wasn't really able to really claim that as his own. And that, I'm just saying, though, that there's rules of engagement here that have to be followed. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. And we're almost done here. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Now, maybe you could argue that that's just the solar system. Okay. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, and so the things that are seen that were not made of things which are visible. And one last one. This one maybe is stretching it a little bit, but get the, uh, perhaps get the idea here for, uh, of, of really what it could be meaning beyond its maybe immediate meaning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 through uh, 4, 4, 9. He says, For I think that God has displayed us, apostles, last as men condemned to death, for we have been made a spectacle, or the word is theater, to the world, both to angels and to men. Again, you could make the argument that it's just confined to, to earth, but if there are other fallen, unfallen uh, beings and the angels, are watching this as well too. Apparently it's important for them to see this thing all the way through, that we are the theater of the universe. Now, right now there's a quarantine, as you well know that word very well, between us and all these other unfallen worlds. They cannot come here. We cannot go there. You know, when you have a Petri dish and you want to keep it sterile, you don't allow a germ to get inside the Petri dish. As soon as you do, and Brando, you know a little bit about this, right? As soon as you put some kind of germ in a Petri dish, that can, it can start to uh, attack or it can start to replicate. You don't want to do that. They don't want to come here. Maybe they do, but they shouldn't. And they don't. So, who are these? fake. It's not fake government. It's not fake natural phenomenon. And I'm not saying that it can't, some of those things can't be, but I believe it's evil angels. I believe it's evil angels posing themselves to get, maybe set us up for something in the future, or if nothing more, just subterfuge for the moment and it has no relevance in the future. I don't know. It's going to be a wait and see. But these are not the unfallen beings from unfallen worlds visiting us. Not at all. And think about it for a second. When you go and visit somebody and knock on their door, or if you're expecting somebody and, and, and you see them pull into the driveway, what do you do? Run and hide in the basement? Because that's exactly what these guys do. They never present themselves. They want, they are somehow, and I don't know how it's done, they are listening and watching and waiting for this to be over with. And this experience that we're going through, our little myopic life that we're going through where we don't sometimes see the forest before the trees, is actually being recorded, actually being documented, and actually being uh, explained. Uh, and they're, very, they're on the edge of their seat. 6,000 years for them is not a very long time. And it's going to be open soon. I'm going to quote, there's only one other person on the planet 
that ever had anything to say about, uh, and I'm going to close with these two quotes, is Ellen White. And some of you may not know who that is. Some consider, and I like, I like the title that one person gave her, as the American prophet, a little old lady from the 1800s with incredible insight. Here's what she said, and you can, you can discard this or you can embrace this, but consider this. She said the controversy of good and evil was not to be taken into the other worlds of the universe, but it was to be carried on in the very world, on the very same field that Satan claimed as his. We, fortunately and unfortunately, um, got in the bus, Adam drove, he drove off the cliff, and we've gotten banged up as a result of it. It's not our fault, but there's, remedi there's a tremendous amount of efforts on the part of heaven to remediate and to restore. And one last uh, quote. Every eye in the unfallen universe is bent upon those who profess to be Christ's followers. Here is this atom of a world, and earnest warfare is going on. They're watching, and they can't wait to this be over with. You want to know why? Because they can't wait for us to come and visit them, see their worlds, meet them. We are social beings, as you probably well know. And with the COVID thing, it has really challenged a lot of people because of the separation that we've had. And the social media, too, has done its part as well, too, keeping us away from each other. We want to be around other people. and They want to be around us. They're going to have a battery of questions. What was it like to struggle with sin? What was it like to fall to sin? What was it like to overcome? What was it like to have a Savior that actually took on your nature what was that like to have a relationship with them on that level? We don't understand that. We, don't, we never had that kind of, you know. So, are there people on other planets? I believe so. And what do they look like? Perhaps very similar to what we look like right here. Time will tell, and someday we will meet them, if in fact that it is all true. All right, thank you very much. And those of you on TikTok, thank you. I'm going to be getting off right now, and you guys go ahead and hang out if you'd like on the channel. Got over 300 videos. Take care. Thank you guys, appreciate it.